How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another video. So you have seen this team before. If you have not, I'm just going to go through it again because I am currently using this for the Whitetail EX and it has been working really remarkably for me. I'm going to show you two runs that I did with the same team. Uh, one being a complete clone of this and another having a third player with a slightly different lineup which is also quite helpful because they are running some units that are quite important in making sure that Whitetail stays grounded. So I'm going to quickly cover what the team over here does and then we are going to move on straight away. So here is a very free to play comp. In fact, this team is just made up of three star units with a Sushi and Kohani as the main base. And then we have Murakumo who is kind of free as well. You just need to do Orochi, you get one copy of him and you can slap him on this team and it works. And of course, you may not have the Malted because the Malted is a little bit difficult to get. If that's the case, you can always use the Death Sword. And Deja Vu, the Death Sword looks like this. I've gone through this before exactly. Uh, it goes up to 300% in attack, but it does take a little bit of time to charge up and especially if you're going to be using my current team you're not going to have 30 combos that easily so you may be foregoing on this one aspect but other than that the death sword is still a very good option so why i really like this team and why it works so well for me is because initially sushi moves first right sushi has to go first so he will be completely depleted and that's when kohane and jester come in right after that with 100 percent skill gauge so kohane goes next pumps up 27% skill gauge to Sushi. The 27 is made up of 10% from Kohane's own ability, 12% from the armament that she's using, and 5% from the Death Tome core. And when Jester takes his turn, the Jester Suzu duo here will then pump 55 extra percentage to Sushi skill gauge. And this 55% comes from the Death Book and the Death Book core, as well as Suzu's skill. And because Sushi himself has the Death Book core, he also grants himself 5% after he uses the first skill. Therefore, after all three unit goes, Sushi followed by Kohani followed by Jester, Sushi himself will be up to 87% skill gauge. And this is very important because you're going to see why this is so important in the run showcase. So let's go ahead and check it out. So we're going to start off with a triple clone over here. Thanks to Big Bra and Fuff for taking the time to join me on this run. So what's happening here is the three Sushis are using their skill, followed by all the Kohanis, followed by all the Jesters. And that's going to immediately drop a 9 chain combo. And as you can see, our Sushis are actually very close to their full skill gauge again. And now that the boss is down, we are going to nuke him really hard. And do take note that because we had Jesters, the paralysis actually lengthens the down duration on the boss. So as you can see, he's actually down for a very long period of time. He's almost down to 50% before he actually wakes up. And because of how powerful Kohane is with the death book, each of our three teams are pretty much ready for round two. Actually, I like they are already ready. Okay, but the thing is, this team, right, it doesn't just work in a clone. It works on its own as well. So you can use it for pups. I use this team for pups as well. The paralysis is super helpful. And the reason why this works in pups is no matter if you get a 9-chain combo or a 4-chain combo, your sushi is still going to strike when the boss is down. So that 87% skill gauge that Sushi starts off with is going to be enough time for you to down the boss with a failed 9 chain combo. That means 8 chain combo and below. So 90% of the time you're going to capture the chain combo and land a powerful nuke. And that's it, Whitetail is done. I think Whitetail is probably one of the easier EX bosses that I've faced so far. Yes, if he goes out of control, he's going to swipe you guys very hard and that's probably where most of your runs are going to fail. So I think it's just a matter of control. Like you can see in this team, he's either down or he's paralyzed. So we don't even need a healer for this team to work. And the run is pretty fast as well, one minute. Okay, so because of how fast it went, let's do another run. This time around, we are going to use a different player number 3. He's going to bring in a slightly different team and he is bringing in a Mel Cell. So let's take a look at what Mel Cell can do and why she is here. This is definitely a unit that doesn't get enough traction. So small preface, Mel Cell is not maxed for me. I have not built her yet. So Arrow Gale invokes the wind and fires 15 arrows at the closest target. So it always hits the mark, inflicting wind damage and Maya on hit foes. And what Maya does is basically just slowing down the boss. So everything that the boss does is slowed down. The time that he takes between each jump gets slowed down. The time that he stays idling also gets slowed down. And in fact, the duration of his down state is amplified by this debuff as well. So it is a helpful, all-rounded, useful debuff for your team. And this is mostly why she's used over here. But of course, if you're using her as a main, you know, while your HP is above a certain threshold, you add attack to other win units. But of course, if you do not have a Mel Cell, you can always opt for Floretta. So as you can see over here, Floretta does pretty much the same thing, except that she starts off with 100% skill gauge, which can be a little bit useful. So she swings her sword to summon bubbles, inflicting light damage and mire on all foes on the field. So she has no proximity requirement, pretty much the same as Mel Cell. Mel Cell doesn't have a proximity requirement as well. She shoots from anywhere in the map. 
So Mel Cell is kind of like a backup fail proof unit. Just in case your Jesters fail to hit the mark, she will then fire whatever that she needs to fire. And therefore your Jesters can then catch up to the boss very easily. So I think at the very least, if you do not want to run a Jester, you should always run a Mel Cell or at least one other unit that can slow down the boss or paralyze the boss. And of course the best options are instant hit units with absolutely no proximity requirements. So like the units that I mentioned before, you have Floretta, you have Inaho and Cypher. Although for Cypher maybe sometimes you can miss, it is possible that the split second that Whitetail jumps, Cypher's skill becomes unable to hit the mark because she has a little bit of charging time. Regardless, I think Jester is still the best option and he is super free to play as well. He is just a 3 star character. And not only does he paralyze, but he also reduces the wind resistance on the boss, which is a huge reason why we are doing so much damage onto him. But of course, I will still try to cover some different builds. So I'm going to cover Celti teams. I'm also going to try to cover uh, Kohane-less builds. Because I know a lot of you guys do not have Kohane. I was in that boat just a few days ago anyway. But still, if you do not have a Kohane, I would still recommend that you try to pull for her. She's not just useful for win-based teams. I use this team for a bunch of other things as well, like advanced bosses, elemental kaleidoscopes, and I think it will be the best option for a lot of the event bosses as well. Oh yeah, and I will probably cover the white tail one pun as well. It is very easy to build, it's super cheap. You just need a bunch of free to play units. So yeah, you can expect all these videos on the horizon. Anyway, I hope the video has been helpful to you. If it was, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, it really helps the channel. Subscribe for more Wolf Leaper content. And this has been free to play by the way, and as always, I will see you in the next video.